So in the previous session, we talked about the lead in and lead out moves. And now that we have them the way we like them, let's talk about stock removal. Right now, the way we have written our operation, we are taking all the material all at once and basically leaving 15,000 for a finish pass. If I zoom in, you can see it's just staying away a little bit. And you can also see that if I select quick verify that basically shows you the tool path and you see there's a little bit of white between my geometry and the actual tool path. Okay. Now we're not going to take all this material all at once. We're actually an inch and a quarter deep. Actually, if you look at the lower left hand corner of the screen, you see that it says Z minus one inch 280. So that's 30 thousandths beyond the bottom of the part. Okay. All right. So let's add a couple of passes, uh, rough passes. So it doesn't take all that stock all at once. It's going to be pretty tough on the tool. So we go back into the parameters and notice we have multi passes right here that is inactive. So the way to make it active is just to put a check mark in that box. All right. So we're going to make two rough passes and let's just put 75 thousands per pass and we're not going to make any finish passes so we're going to leave that at zero so just by doing that let's click ok let's regenerate and i notice i have two tool paths around my part so we're going to simulate that again we're going to turn off quick verify it's coming down in Z and we're going to speed that up a little bit. You can see that's the first pass. That's 75 thousandths away from leaving 15 thousandths. And then it's going to jump up. I'm going to skew it so you can see that move. So it jumped up, goes back to the start of that contour back to top and now you can see I'm 15 thousandths away from my finished part on that second pass. So I only had about 125 thousandths per side so there was no need to add more passes. If you want to add more passes then you can obviously just increase that number or increase or decrease the spacing yeah or the side cut of each pass all right so let's talk about depth of cut next now notice when we go around our part we're going straight to finish now the tool could probably handle this this is aluminum and the tool probably wouldn't have a problem but sometimes you're removing a little bit more stock and it's a little bit hard on the tool to take it all at once. So what you want to do is you want to break it up into depth of cuts. So again, we select the depth of cuts, we put a check mark in depth of cuts, and it tells us the max rough step. Okay, and it defaults out at point one. Our part is an inch and a quarter, or we're going to a depth of minus one inch to eighty. So roughly divided by two is 0.7. Always go a little bit more than just half of it and round it off. Okay, and then the software is going to do the math for you. Notice how it says max rough step. Now, what it's going to do, it's going to look at your linking parameters, it's going to look at the top of stock and the depth or the total depth. It looks at that overall height or distance and divides that by. 0.7 and then makes it two equal passes. Let's take a look at that. So we click OK. Again, we're going to have to regen. Now notice there's two passes or two depth of cuts and then two passes per depth. OK, so it, it takes the multiple passes and does that at each level, if you will. So we're going to simulate that. So here's that first pass. Now notice in the lower left hand screen, 632 thousands to be exact is how it's 
dividing those depth of cuts. Okay, so it makes that second pass. Again, let's turn on the rapid moves, and you can see that at the end of the toolpath, it jumps up to a one inch clearance plane and goes back to the start of the next pass. And then it's done. Now the reason why we created stock is because there is an option right here next to back plot there is a verified selected operations. If you click on it then it takes that stock that we created and actually creates a solid block. So this window opens up like this you just maximize it. Now there is that same part but now in a solid form and if I let me see if I can slow this down just a little bit. We're going to hit the play button. It makes those two passes. And this is exactly what you're going to see at your machine. So we have a little bit to hold on to at the bottom of the part. You can see the actual depth of the cut is 1 inch to 80, which is about 30 thousandths beyond the actual thickness of the part. Okay? So that is what you would actually see at your machine. So that's the solid verify. So that's one reason why you want to create a solid. So you can actually have a visual before you send your program out to the machine and make sure that you get exactly what it is you want from your toolpath. So when you're done with solid verify, just click the X and you're back to your Mastercam screen. All right, so now that we are done roughing, we are ready for a finish pass. We have 15 thousandths per side to take off. So we're going to create a new contour operation. We're going to right click next to the red arrow, hover over mill tool paths and select contour. Then again, we're going to select the contour starting with the upper left hand corner and go all the way around. Again, notice I picked partial and put a check mark in weight to make sure that that green arrow doesn't want to move around and chase the red arrow. Okay. All right. So click OK. Tool type is contour tool. Now tool number one was used for roughing. We're going to select a finish tool, which is also going to be a half inch flat end mill. We we'll click OK and then we get this warning saying you already have a similar tool. Add another one and you click yes. So we click OK. So here's that next one, tool number 290. So we double click on it and we want to make that tool number two. Enter. And then in the tool description, just put your cursor right in front of that half. And do FIN for finish half inch flat end mill. And then we click finish. Then the next thing we're going to do is enter the speed, the spindle speed. And we're going to finish at 30 inches a minute. And our plunge rate at 50 inches a minute. Enter. Then in the comment section, we're going to enter finish pass. Okay, now we talked about cut parameters and in the last operation we used computer because we don't need to use cutter compensation on a roughing pass, but we will use that on a finish pass. So we're going to select where then stock to leave on walls. We left 10 thousands on the walls, so we're going to make that zero. Then depth of cuts is active. And we're going to go ahead and let that stay active. And we're going to break up the finish pass with a halfway down and then full depth. Okay. The lead in lead out is going to be exactly the same as when we created our roughing pass. So each operation that you create after that operation it basically keeps everything the same. Notice we still have the second check box unchecked, a perpendicular move of a hundred thousands, and that's where we're going to activate the cutter comp. So that's where the 
post-processor is going to add a G41 on that line. We extended our start of the contour a half an inch and then on the exit side we have a perpendicular move of 0.1 and an overlap of 20 thousandths. Then multi-passes we can go ahead and make the rough pass zero and we're going to make one finish pass with zero spacing okay then the linking parameters we're going to have to manually enter minus one inch 280 again top of stock is still 15 thou everything is set to absolute our retract is at one inch feed plate point one good to go coolant coolant is still on so we click ok and we're going to back plot now when we back plot make sure there's only a check mark in the folder right next to the operation that you want to back plot if both of them have a check mark on that little folder then it's going to show you the rough and finish passes so only select the folder that you want to back plot so then we select the back plot selected operations and let's look at that from the top I'm going to slow that down so it is going to make a perpendicular move and on that perpendicular move to get in line with our first piece of geometry it's going to post out a G41 on that move so let's watch that it's coming down it made that move right there goes all the way around the part and then when it comes back to that intersection we're going to slow it down once it gets there okay let me zoom in all right so it comes around that corner it's going to do a 20 thousandths overlap which means 20 thousandths beyond that corner and then a hundred thousandths perpendicular move away and on that move away from the part it posts out a g40 canceling cutter comp then it jumps up it moves over to the next pass at full depth again activates cutter comp on that pass at full depth you can see in the lower left hand corner we're sitting at z minus one inch 280 all the way around and again when it comes around that final corner it overlaps and cancels cutter comp one more time so that takes care of the finish pass all right we're now ready to post these two operations and create a program so we need to select both folders if you click on one folder at a time it keep, keeps on clicking the other one so we can click on this button here that says select all operations click on G1 post selected operations then make sure that this post processing box looks like this NC file has a check mark ask is clicked and edit has a check mark and we click OK then it's gonna post in documents my master cam mill and C you can either let it default out here and save it in a different location later once you've made your edits or save it to a different folder right now it's up to you so we're gonna click Save and it should open up in the master cam editor and this is what the program will look like when you first see it now we did not enter a program number so we're just gonna make it program number one the name next to it is called contour milling and then the next line is the date and the time we'll leave that alone the next three lines is not information that we need to keep so I just highlight it and click delete on my keyboard then there's a description of tool number one a half inch rough flat end mill and tool number two a finish half flat end mill the information beyond that 
I usually get rid of not to take up space or memory in my control. So I just delete all that, make it a little bit cleaner. Then the only other thing I need you to look at is the A0 and the decimal. Highlight it. If you have a machine that has a fourth axis, it's okay to keep it. If you just have a three axis, that A0 will make it alarm out. So we need to remove the A0s. There's going to be uh, two tool changes here. So we'll have one at the top and one at the bottom of each operation. So that's four occurrences. So instead of manually deleting them, if you highlight them and you go to home, click replace, it brings in that A0 on find what line, then replace with and keep that blank, replace all, and it found four occurrences, and click OK. So it has removed all the A0s in the program. Sometimes your program has several operations and that would take a long time to manually delete those. So that's a quick way of getting rid of data in multiple locations. All right, so let's take a look at the program. We got tool number one doing the rough contour and notice it's going to wrap it to that Z1 inch. So that's the value that we entered in the linking parameters. That's that clearance. Then the next value was a hundred thousands. And then notice those are rapid moves and then it feeds halfway down the part at a rate of 50 inches a minute. So that is the plunge rate. Okay, then it starts feeding at 25 inches around the part. So it makes two passes. Notice it completed one, jumps up, moves back to the start point, rabbits back to 100 ounces above the part, and then feeds back to Z minus 632 and a half for the second rough pass. Then it jumps up to Z1 inch, back to the start point. And now it feeds all the way down to full depth, makes one pass, makes the second pass, and then sends the tool home, turns the spindle and the coolant off, and makes a tool change. Now here, what I want you to notice is it still goes down halfway on the Z on that first finish pass. But because we made wear active, we now have a G41 D2 on that first line where we make a perpendicular move in line with our first piece of geometry. It goes all the way around and then as it makes a move away from the part, it posts out a G40. Then on the second pass, again, it activates G41. And when it comes all the way around, cancels cut a comp. And then that's the end of the program. So this program is ready to be loaded into your control and safe to run. All right, so that is the basics of contour milling.